stage for everybody tonight, please welcome James Parkinson. Hey guys, it's me. Remember me? I was a guy. I was like, how many? Sit the fuck down. <laughs> no idea what was going on. I would have been way nicer. I wouldn't have been so cunty to everybody. How we doing? Lights seems to be working. Why? Why? Is it fuzzy? Is that why? A little feedback? Yeah. Who gives a shit? All right. Um, I was reading an article the other day, and uh, I, I came across a word, abutment. Anyone know what abutment means? Anyone? Anyone? Me neither. I had to look it up in the dictionary, and the first listing was abutment. Something that abuts. <laughs> and the second one was the act of abutting. And I'm like, hey, dictionary, you can't define the word that I'm looking up with the word that I'm looking up. But I like the idea of a dictionary that's just a total cock to everybody. <laughs> look up tree, and it's like, tree, it's a, it's a tree. It's a tree. They're fucking everywhere. <laughs> It's a trick. Just look outside. You're bald. You're a dick. You're a, you're a son of a bitch. Why is the dictionary being so personally offensive to me? Hey, cool. Um, I just moved to New York, guys, like two and a half months ago. Thank you for the round of applause. And uh, for the first like month and a half or so, my stock answer when all my friends back in Seattle would ask me, how's it going, how's New York? I would just be like, it's great, it's amazing, it's the most amazing place in the world, it's fantastic. Now, I just, ha I have to be honest, I'm like, help me, help, everyone here is an asshole, and it's cold, and everyone's rude, and everything, everything costs $10, at least. Um, it's awful, I'm getting my ass kicked, New York? New York has been treating me recently like I slept with his sister and I didn't call her back. It's like, every job I go to, it's like New York got to him first and was like, that dude will fuck your family and then he'll delete their phone number. But don't hire him. He's a son of a bitch. So, I'm trying to adjust from the change, you know, uh, I, I did leave Seattle. Seattle is a wonderful place, um, but it is. Full of crazy people. Has anyone here ever been to Seattle, Washington? Anyone yeah. ever spent any time? I and mean, people in Seattle are wonderful people. They're well read, but they're crazy. They just walk around drinking espresso chinis and <laughs> like recycling everything, like like a green like Godzilla. Like <laughs> they suck. And the, no, they refuse to finish their screenplay. Every one of them. <laughs> um, <laughs> And uh, I, I had to get out of Seattle. This, this paints a perfect picture for you guys. I was in Seattle and I was on a bus. I was riding the bus in Seattle. And if you don't know what that is, it's like a, a subway that goes around on the street. And, um, <laughs> and the guy sitting across from me on the bus, he had pants on made out of garbage bags. Which is just smart, you know. It's like, I mean, that's rainproof. Um, but he also had on like a really nice jacket, so like that'll give you an idea. Stolen. Um, and here's where the story gets weird. Something was going on inside of his jacket pocket. Like he was slapping something in his pocket like this. What is this guy doing? I lean closer. I decide to lean closer and get a better look. Don't do that, man. You're not gonna like what you're gonna find when the guy across from you is punching himself in his clothes. Um, but I lean closer to see what's going on, and I look into his pocket, and he's got a squirrel. <laughs> and here's the thing, people in Seattle are so weird, I've had to change what I consider to be weird. Like when I saw that it was just a squirrel, it was a relief. <laughs> Thank God. I thought this man was crazy. He's just got a squirrel in his pocket. There's nothing wrong with him. He's just punching a fucking squirrel in the mouth. Everyone sit down. Relax. I was, and then I was telling that joke, the cherry on top, I was telling that joke at a show in Seattle shortly before I moved. The guy in the front row interrupts me when I get to this part. And he goes, oh, uh, it's going to be a squirrel. <laughs> and I was like, wait a minute, sir. How did you infer that it was going to be a squirrel by the zero contextual clues that I got? <laughs> There's nothing giving 
straight away that it was going to be a swirl. Like, surely you've seen me do comedy before. And he goes, no, I've never seen you do comedy. I just know the guy. <laughs> He's on my Facebook. That's what he said. Do you see now, people? Do you see why I moved to New York? To get away from crazy people? <sighs> Maybe I get it, you know? Like, maybe one day I'll be sitting in the park. I'll see a squirrel. <laughs> and I'll make eye contact. <laughs> Have a moment, you know? Um, and then, like, trap him, right? <laughs> and take him home and, and, like, teach him how to love. <laughs> How to be loved in return. <laughs> then maybe one day I'll go downtown, maybe farmer's market, take the squirrel with me. <laughs> Buy some nuts. I'm not fucking the squirrel. <laughs> you don't know, you don't understand our love. Um, <laughs> We're downtown, we're buying nuts, and then uh, on the way home, we get on the we get on the bus, and what starts happening in New York? What starts happening? The squirrel starts talking at you, <laughs> like they do, just whispering lies at you in Latin. <laughs> Are you gonna take that? Are you gonna sit there and let that squirrel steal your past, alter your memories, lay eggs in your spine? <laughs> Fuck that! I'm the chosen one. This is my bus. <laughs> should be legalized. <laughs> I know that here ever been to New Orleans, Louisiana. Any New Orleans? You guys never leave New York. No one in this room is clapped any time so No to other places! Um, well, I went there. I went to New Orleans. And um, uh, I was visiting a friend of mine, and when I was on my way there, he was like, whatever you do, don't eat at the airport. You're going to want to be really hungry when you get there, because New Orleans got the best food in the world. And so by the time I got there, I was starving, right? And I go out, and I order breakfast, and I ask for grits on the side. Good old southern hominy grits, cooked by like a Creole chef, and it was one of these restaurants that's like outside of the French Quarter, so it's like, you know, the locals eat there, it's where the good stuff is, right? And they ate the grits, and they tasted like, fuck, man, because you ever had grits? <laughs> they're disgusting! They're like, they're like warm sand mixed with wood glue! <laughs> I realize you're getting married tomorrow, but I have to say, I tried grits and I just didn't like them. And he got furious. He was like, how dare you? He's like, I don't think it's all right to not like grits. So I had to back up. I had to back up. To back up and I was just like, okay, they weren't, they weren't that bad. They're just, they're just kind of bland. There's just not much to them. And he goes, oh, you're doing it wrong. Here's what you do. If you eat grits, you gotta melt butter on top, add a little salt, a little pepper, maybe cut up some bacon, add some cheese, sure. My time! My time. Yeah, you cut up bacon, you cut up sausage, you add like a uh, runny egg, and you put it on an English muffin. Guess what? That's not grits anymore, Keith. You just named nine other things. That's not grits, that's a McGriddle. Which is the highest form of cheating, okay? You add 